Here at Cracked, we like to disabuse you of all the misconceptions Hollywood has put into your pretty little head. One glaring lie, prison sex. Warm flesh and blood behind cold iron bars. Oh, it happens, but it's much less glamorous and much more on the go than pop culture would have you believe. So if two girls decide, hey, let's go have some fun, they just go to the pavilion bathroom, which is very much like an outhouse. That's Nancy. She spent 18 months in a minimum security prison after helping her boyfriend steal drugs. But she's out now, and she's sharing her hard-won knowledge with Cracked, starting with... What they usually do is, okay, one goes in, hangs out for a little bit, their friends are sitting there playing cards, so their friends are watching out for them. The other one will go in. They're not getting totally naked. Generally, the way they do it is one will stand on the toilet seat while the other one pulls your pants down, and there you go, you're having some fun. The guards are well aware of all the raw, unwrapped prison poundings. That's the reason for a particularly humiliating procedure. As part of their intake, prisoners are subjected to a battery of STD tests. The ones who don't pass that entrance exam with flying colors are housed separately from uninfected inmates. It should be noted that this strategy was found to be seriously ineffective. But prisoners, by and large, are still not given access to condoms or other safe sex supplies for fear that it will condone sexual activity. Hey, you know what else might be seen to condone sexual activity? Guards actually f***ing the prisoners. But that happens. And internet, before you start porning, you should know 70% of women's prison guards are men. The kind of men who become prison guards. When I first got there, there was the inmate and the guard. It wasn't like she was going by his office and sliding a note under the door. They were sending it through legitimate mail service. The guard would be like, okay, we, we gotta go do some heating and air conditioning work today. So let's go down to the boiler room. And then, you know, they're having fun in the boiler room. I think what some people don't realize is if a guard has sex with an inmate no matter where, and you get charged for it, you will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of your life. The fact that one party in the prisoner guard love equation has access to weaponry should highlight the fundamental power imbalance here. And yes, it can be very dangerous to friend zone a prison guard. We had a new female guard come in. She would make my roommate that had the fascination with another guard. That same inmate became the target of this guard's attention. The guard would just give her a hard time about every little thing. She would have visitors every weekend. After visitation, that guard always made sure that she could take her out in and do a strip search. It was more of um, just her, I need you to pull your butt cheeks a little farther, or you need to cough a little harder. My roommate was putting in complaints, but it was like, she blows everything out of proportion, don't worry about it, and kind of covered the guard's ass. Contraband tampons are a thing in lady prison. It turns out feminine hygiene products in general are locked up tighter than the prisoners themselves. Oh God, that absolutely is not meant as a double entendre, Jesus. Somebody roll the next title before I get f To shave your legs in your prison, you don't get your own razors. You have to go to a guard and say, hey, I need a razor, I wanna shave. So they would give you a razor and you better not be in there longer than 15 minutes. They don't like stand there and time you, but at the same time, they know you're in there, they know how long it should take. Um, once you're done shaving your legs, you give the razor to the guard and then the guard throws them away. And it was a safety thing. You don't want them breaking the razors and melting them into a plastic handle and using them as shanks. All right, girls. Back in yourself. And as for feminine hygiene products, which are ubiquitous in the Orange is the New Black universe, well, they're not actually that available. You know, you can smuggle stuff in using a tampon or a maxi pad. So you were only issued what you needed. So you're not gonna be able to stash away a bunch of tampons or pads. Cause you know, they do locker checks to make sure you're not hoarding things like that. The strict focus on tampon security seems all the more baffling since arguably filling vaginas would actually cut down massively on the prison smuggling problem. One of the most popular ways to smuggle in goods is shooting it up your vagina. There was one inmate and I noticed she had a tongue ring 
And she's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And I'm like, well, how'd you get it in there? And she's like, well, I just stuck it up my brought it in that way. So you bury it up enough in there, deep enough, and you cough, it's not coming out. <laughs> That's good fun. Who doesn't love a good smuggling stuff in an orifice story? Now let's confront the stark realities of race in American prisons. Racial tensions, they do exist. I mean, there is intermingling, of course. They don't totally segregate. You can't talk to her because she's white or anything like that. Blacks are treated significantly worse. They get harsher sentences. They get longer sentences. A white inmate such as myself, I was in trouble for conspiracy to distribute crack. My sentence was originally three years, 10 months. I flipped and got it reduced. But you could see a black inmate there same situation, same circumstances, but she'll have more time. A black girl will get with a white girl because the white girl has something to offer. She's got commissary, she's getting money, so gal can mooch off her for her money. A white gal would get with a black girl, usually for almost like bragging rights, you know. Oh, she's with that black chick, and that black chick's cool, so she's cool. So it's more of kind of like a protection thing. Nobody gets together because they like each other. It's always a motive. Okay, so prisoners have to deal with heightened racial tensions. They get their tampons from a cop, and they smuggle things in their vaginas. At least they've got sweet, free government health care. A year in prison might actually be pretty cost-effective if you're already sick or pregnant. When it comes to a woman's health and gynecology and all that good stuff, you get your first exam when you come in and then you're lucky to get one every year. They could care less if you have a yeast infection. You basically go to sick call. Hey, I think I got a yeast infection. All right, so they'll do a quick exam, but you would have to go to sick call to get that every day. Forever how long the directions say, three days, well, three days. If you still got a yeast infection, well, then they're getting pissed. Well, she's just trying to get out of doing work or she's just making it up for attention, that kind of thing. They don't care. Around 5% of women who enter prison do so pregnant. And yes, pregnant prisoners are on their own too. Some of them give birth there. I remember a pregnant inmate. She cried wolf a lot, but she started spotting really heavily. And so they're like, oh, you're fine. Just go on bed rest. Don't do anything. And she ended up going into labor early and having some complications as a result of not getting care when she needed it. That's actually not even the worst case scenario. In 33 states, you could be forced to give birth in shackles. But hey, these women are prisoners. They may face terrible treatment, but statistically, most of them committed the horrific crimes of, well, drug possession, like our source, or self-defense, like Marissa Alexander. She got 20 years for firing a warning shot at her abusive husband. Score one more for Lady Justice. Hey, the Cracked Podcast is coming to you live June 10th at Upright Citizens Brigade Theater Sunset. We're going to have Tom Ryman, Daniel O'Brien, comedian Jamie Loftus, and writer Dave Schilling talking about why all movies were insane behind the scenes. Every single one of them. Go to UCB Sunset's website for tickets and go have a great day too, man.